Namaskar learners. I, Harpreet Kaur, welcome you all on behalf of National Institute of Open Schooling, that is NIOS. As you all know that the motive of NIOS is education for all. That's why we keep on bringing for you our audio and video programs. And today, in this video program, we have brought something very important and interesting under the subject chemistry. We are going to talk about coordination compounds. What are we waiting for now? Let's start learning chemistry. Today we have with us Professor Sulek Chandra, who is Associate Professor from Zakir Hussain College, Delhi University. Welcome to the studio, sir. Thank you, madam. And we also have with us Dr. Rajiv Prasad, Academic Officer Chemistry, NIOS. Welcome you, you, sir. Thank you. And now it's time for us to know about Werner's theory. Why Werner is known as the father of coordinate chemistry and what his theory is all about. So, Professor, please tell us about it. Yeah. So, I have just told you that Werner was the first chemist who was successfully explained the structure of the complexes and their formula. Okay. And that's why he got Nobel Prize in 1913 and that's why he is known as father of coordination chemistry. Okay. His observation has been divided into two categories known as postulates and experimental evidences. Okay. So according to Werner, this should be clear that every metal ion has two types of valencies. Mm -hmm. These are known as primary and secondary valencies. Okay. Primary valencies are also known as ionic valency, ionized. They can be easily ionized. Okay. And secondary valencies are non-ionizable. Primary valencies are also known as ionic valency. That they are satisfied, the students should understand positively, they are satisfied by the anions only. Cation or neutral molecule cannot be counted for the primary valencies. Mm -hmm. I'll give the example. So they are satisfied by the anions only. And second important is in modern terminology, mm -hmm. primary valencies correspond to the oxidation number of the central metal ion. Okay. Or you can say that if you know the number of primary valencies, you can easily find out the oxidation state of the central metal ion. So they correspond to the oxidation state of the central metal ion. Since they are not in, present inside the coordination sphere, so geometry cannot be decided on the base or you can say they are non-directional in nature. Now secondary valencies can be satisfied by the anions or neutral molecules mm -hmm. or the cations. In modern terminology, we say secondary valencies correspond to the coordination number of the central metal ion. Okay. So if you know the coordination number, you can easily say the number of secondary valencies. Okay. For example, I have just told you CU and H3 6. It means the secondary valencies are 6. So, this should be clear here. Third postulate has been given. If any anion, mm -hmm. I have just told you the primary valencies are satisfied by the anions only. Mm -hmm. If any anion is present inside the coordination sphere, that will satisfy both primary as well as secondary mm -hmm. valencies. But in properties, it resembles only with the secondary valencies. So that is not primary valencies. We generally count them in secondary valencies. These are the three postulates of Werner theory. Mm -hmm. Now, on the basis of experiment, Werner was able to explain the structure of complexes. As I have just told you, Tejat has synthesized CO, Cl3, 6NH3. He could not explain how many ammonia or how many water, chloride ions are present mm -hmm. inside the coordination sphere. So first Werner has given precipitation, that is the, you can say experimental evidences, mm -hmm. precipitation. He has taken the compounds and then add silver nitrate solution. Okay. Then he find out how many chloride ions are precipitated out. Mm -hmm. So he observed that when we add silver nitrate solution, three moles of Chlorines are, chloride ions are mm -hmm. precipitated out. For example, mm -hmm. you can take COCl3, 6NH3 mm -hmm. plus silver nitrate. Mm -hmm. He observed 3 AgCl. This indicates that it means I have just told you earlier that any part which is present outside the square bracket will be, will give qualitative test. So it means all the three chloride ions are present outside the square bracket. Mm -hmm. So therefore, the formula of the complex would be CO. Na36 within the square bracket mm -hmm. and Cl3 outside the square bracket. The second compound is synthesized CoCl3 5NH3. 
again he added silver nitrate he found only two moles of silver nitrate it indicates that out of three only two chloride ions are present outside the square bracket and one present inside the square bracket so yes suggested the formula co nh35cl square bracket closed then cl2 similarly you can take co cl34 nh3 where you can found only one agcl will get again co nh34 cl2 and one cl outside the condensate sphere and co cl3 3 nh3 he founds no precipitate with silver nitrate it means all the three chloride ions are present inside the condensate sphere okay. so you can easily say that co nh33 cl3 so by using this experiment you can easily find out the formula of the complex you can take any complex by using this experimental evidences you can easily write down the formula of the complex second evidence is he has taken molar molar conductance mm -hmm. and molar conductance are the fixed values that depends number of the ions present in the solution okay for example complex will be always single ion mm -hmm. suppose you take co nh36 cl3 mm -hmm. it is going to ionize like this co nh36 3 plus that is the one ion plus cl3 cl minus mm -hmm. three ion the total number of ions will be 1 plus 3 4 ions okay. if number of ions are 4 then conductance will be around 400 similarly we can if the number of ions are 5 it will be 500 number of ions are 3 then conductance will be around 250 similarly if one to two uh, number of ions are there then conductance will be 100 so by calculating or by by finding the conductance again you can easily find out how many ions are present outside the condensate sphere okay so he has taken two evidences mainly i'm sure learners have understood the werner's theory and you are also jotting down the important points because mm. let me give you a hint This theory is extremely important from your examination point of view. And now something very important and very interesting for all of us to know. Dr. Rajiv, let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. There is an agency mm -hmm. with the name IUPAC. Mm -hmm. What does it stand for mm -hmm. and what it does? Mm -hmm. It is stand for International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. That is the union which decides how to give the IUPAC name of the complexes or organic compounds also and these rules are followed all over the world you okay. can say so these are the uh, authority to decide the ipic naming of different complexes and organic compounds okay so uh, to understand how to start ipic naming of mm -hmm. these complexes mm -hmm. there are certain rules okay. we have uh, formulated these rules says that the when we have to give ipic name of a complex the first step we have to start to give uh, to find out the oxidation number of central metal ion okay. that is the first step okay suppose an example co ns3 3 cl3 mm -hmm. so in this complex the our first motto is to find out the oxidation number of central metal ion that okay. is the cobalt when we calculate the central metal ion its oxidation number mm -hmm. then comes to the naming of ligands mm -hmm. what are the name of ligands what are their number mm -hmm. their rules are in this way in this process first we have decided the oxidation number what mm -hmm. is the um, oxidation number of central metal right. ion now when we start naming of the ligands uh -huh. we have to use alphabetical order suppose there is chloride ion and th there is ammonia mm -hmm. also both are mm -hmm. ligands so we have to give the name first ammonia okay. and then chloride to naming these uh, ligands there are certain rules i am telling you that first step the naming of central metal their oxidation number determination okay. then the naming of ligands naming of their number okay. as a mono tri tetra mm. penta hexa okay. but in case of halogens suppose it is chloride or bromide we have to use chlorido bromido iodo okay and in case of bidentate ligand we have used the number Suppose there is a two bidentate ligand, one base, trace, but these are the common terms which have we have to use mm -hmm. to give the IPIC naming. Third portion is that when we give the IPIC name, first we have to write name of ligand, then come to the name of central metal ion, then comes to the its oxidation state, mm -hmm. and last we have to use another rule that name of central metal ion that iron, cobalt, nickel, what will the central metal ion? Okay. how we have to write if the complex is an anionic complex suppose mm -hmm. the charge comes to the negative mm -hmm. 
after the ionization mm -hmm. when you split the complex. In case of anionic complexes, the name of central metal ion ends with ATE. Okay. That if it is iron, we have to use ferrate. If it is cobalt, mm -hmm. cobaltate. Okay. If it is nickel, nickelate. Okay. In this way, in case of only anionic complexes, okay. this is the rule. Okay. We generally we can we cannot write iron. In case of neutral mm -hmm. complexes where there is no overall charges on mm -hmm. the conditional sphere, mm -hmm. we have to name the central metal as it is. If okay. it is iron, it is copper, it is cobalt, as okay. such. In case of neutral cationic ligands, mm -hmm. we have also used the mm -hmm. same process iron is iron, copper is copper, okay. silver is silver. Okay. Because basically, we have to take care that in case of anionic, the name of central metal atom will ends with ATE. That is the most important thing. Okay. And the general trend naming the epic rule, mm -hmm. uh, first I have explained you that the oxidation number, finding of oxidation number of central metal, then naming of ligands, their numbers mm -hmm. and then central metal, name of central metal, their oxidation state in Roman words okay. in bracket and then if there is any anion or cation present before or last of the coordination complexes. Suppose uh, one example I am giving you that in case of complex chromium mm -hmm. E n hole 3 and condition sphere and then C L 3 is given. So, we have to name in this complex in this way first we have find out the oxidation number of chromium okay. in this complex. So, oxidation number will come to mm -hmm. 3 and the ligand is ethylene diamine that is the neutral ligand. So, as the number is given 3, so we have to say trace then we in the bracket we have to write trace and the bracket will start with the ethylene diamine. Mm -hmm. This indicates the 3, E n whole 3 is written that 3 we have to not write here try, we have to use tri, T R I S tris. Okay. Then the name of central metal that is chromium okay. as the complex indicates C L 3 is outside the coordination sphere. Mm -hmm. It will ionize as C L 3 minus so overall the charge on the complex will come 3 plus. Okay. That means it is a cationic complex. All right. So, we have to write the chromium. Okay. And after that, its oxidation number mm -hmm. in the bracket Roman word we have to write 3. Okay. So, over, we have completed tris, ethylene diamine, mm -hmm. chromium 3 and then Cl3 is present outside the condition sphere. Okay. So, we have to write chloride, not its number, only right. chloride. Mm -hmm. So, this is the sequence we have to follow to give the epic name of the complexes. Okay. One important question I just also want to explain something, sir. Suppose uh, our complex is chromium hexaamine and overall three charges given. So, what should the naming of this, uh, IPIC name of this complex? Now, students or learners should be able to understand clearly about this naming. Mm -hmm. As Dr. Rajiv told you, there are certain rules, but something you should also know. Mm -hmm. Now, first of all, as Dr. Rajiv told you, that we should be able to find out the nature of the complex. Mm -hmm. The nature of complex is complex may be positively charged, may be negative charged mm -hmm. or may be neutral. The three type of complexes are there. Mm -hmm. Neutral means because generally students confused here. If suppose we take K4 FeCN6, mm -hmm. it is not a neutral complex. Oh, yeah. Students should be clear mm -hmm. because this has no charge. Mm -hmm. But since potassium is present outside the condensation sphere, so overall complex will have four negative charge. Yeah. So this is an anionic complex. Okay. Mm -hmm. Similarly, we take CO, NH3, 6, Cl3. Again, it is neutral, mm. having no charge. Mm. But if you see the complex, complex will always cationic. Mm. It will have three positive charge. Because generally, students are confused. Because it is a neutral complex. Mm. Eh? Mm. Not a neutral. There is no charge. No charge. Okay. Now, neutral means that suppose you take NiCO4. Mm -hmm. It has no charge. Neutral. Mm. Neither nickel is zero. Carbon monoxide is also zero. Mm. So, they have no charge. That is known as neutral mm. complex. One more important point is, the complex names should be written always in single word. Mm. CO NH3 6 mm. 3 plus. So, this is you should be write down hexaamine mm. okay. chromium 3. Mm. You should be gaining mm. the This is first you take hexa, okay. then uh, space, is, it should be then, continuous. Oh, then okay. it should be a single line, single okay. line. Mm. One complex single name. Mm -hmm. So, complex name should be a single word. Mm. Okay. This is the most important. Secondly, Raj uh, already told you that use alphabetical order. Mm -hmm. Here again is a question, sometimes mm -hmm. the student confused. Okay. 
Suppose if four ammonia is there, mm -hmm. then you shouldn't say we should see in T. No. Not Because not. we have to see the ligands. Ligand mm -hmm. is amine yeah. A. So you have to see the what type of ligand H. Ligand can you have to see the name of ligands, not the number of ligands. This is the most important. Generally, in case of anionic ligands, mm -hmm. we replaced E by O. Okay. Sulfate, sulfato, mm -hmm. sulfide, sulfito, okay. or acetate, acetato. Mm -hmm. So you can put generally. Okay. But there are few examples where you can be two both the ways. Mm -hmm. Generally, use I D E chloride. Mm -hmm. Okay. Chloride can be written as chloro as well as chlorido. Do. Okay. Similarly, bromide can be written as bromo as well as bromido. Mm. This one should be clear. Chloride, fluoride, fluoro or fluorido. Okay. Or iodide, iodo or iodido. Okay. This one can easily write down the name. Mm. Now for neutral ligands, except three. I am repeating again. Mm. Except three. If ammonia is there, write down A double M I N E. Mm. For water, aqua. Mm. A Q U A. Okay. For carbon monoxide, carbonyl. And another is NO nitrosyl. Okay. After these four, all the naming of neutral ligand will be given as such. Okay. Suppose ethylene diamine will be called ethylene diamine, mm -hmm. or you can take triethylene diamine will be called triethylene diamine. Okay. Arsine will be called as arsine. Mm -hmm. Naming remains same except mm -hmm. these four. One more category is there, although I don't think so in the syllabus or not. Cationic ligands are also there. Mm -hmm. So, for example, NO plus mm -hmm. because NO plus creates some problems here. Mm -hmm. So if you write down NO, you consider NO is a cationic ligand, mm -hmm. then you put nitrosilium, mm -hmm. N-I-T-R-O-S-Y-L, mm -hmm. put I-U-M, mm -hmm. then you take this is, okay. then That's for example, same. I'm repeating again yeah. here, in such cases, if you consider positive ligand, okay. the oxidation instead of central metal ion will change. Okay. Mm -hmm. For example, you take N-A-C-N-5-N-O, okay. mm -hmm. if you take neutral ligand, then The oxidation number of iron will be here. Again, I'm repeating. If you take NO is a neutral ligand, mm -hmm. then you put here CN5, mm -hmm. iron 3, that is 2 minus sign. Mm -hmm. Iron 2, if you take, then 3 minus sign. Mm -hmm. If you take one positive charge, NO plus, mm -hmm. then one positive charge is there, mm -hmm. then only four cyanide will remain. Mm -hmm. So if you take iron 2, mm -hmm. so then become 2 plus. Okay. So similarly, iron 3, you mm -hmm. take one minus charge. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, the one more category is there. I'm again addition that numbering of ligands. Okay. There are two different ways. One way is ligand do not have mm -hmm. di, tri, tetra in their name. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then you take one ligand mono. Mm -hmm. there, if there are two ligands bi or di, mm -hmm. three ligand tri. Okay. If the ligand themselves have di, tri in their names, mm -hmm. okay. then you can now use di or tri so on. Just for example, okay. mm -hmm. Rajiv, Dr. Rajiv mm -hmm. told you. Ethylene di, I mean di, what is all it in mm -hmm. ethylene? Right. So you put tris, mm -hmm. the C O okay. E N 3 tris, mm -hmm. ethylene di, I mean. Mm -hmm. One more category there, sometimes it isn't confused here. I have just given the example just now, where only either cation is complex or mm -hmm. anion is complex. Okay. Yeah. There are certain compounds where both anion or cation are complexes. For example, you take C U N S 3 4, C U C L 4. Both are Cationic complex, mm -hmm. anion is also complex. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. There is no change in the naming. Mm -hmm. First species will always have positive charge. Mm -hmm. Second species will always have negative charge. Okay. So first, I have just told you CuNH3, 4, 2 plus. Okay. That is tetra, I mean copper, 2. Okay. Then CuCl4, it is 2 negative charge. Okay. So tetra, chloro, cuprate, 2. Cationic complexes are there, mm -hmm. cationic neutral. Mm -hmm. There is no change in the name of the central metal ion. Cobalt remain cobalt, nickel remain nickel. But if complex has negative charge, then you should add ATE, cobaltate, mm -hmm. nickelate, zincate, or vanadate, ferrate, so on. Okay. I hope our learners have understood about the IUPAC naming, and it's very important to follow the rules if you want to give your compounds a correct name. And now, something important yes, there are so many important things in this chapter. Professor, please tell us about the valence bond theory. Yeah, this is also comes under the category of bonding in complexes. Mm -hmm. Okay. There are different, different types of methods are there, but we have to concentrate first only valence bond theory. Mm -hmm. I think we have already studied valence bond theory in chemical bonding. Mm -hmm. Similarly, valence bond theory was given by this is Huns and Mulligan. Okay. Now this theory is based actually from where this theory is originated. Mm -hmm. Okay. Actually, when complex was synthesized. 
there are two complexes having same at line in same oxygen state only ligands were different for example coNH363+ and cof 63 minus when the magnetometer of these compounds were found mm -hmm. it has been found that one is diamagnetic other is paramagnetic mm -hmm. in nature it was the scientists were very surprised why it is so okay because pauling was the chemist who has given the idea of chemical bonding mm -hmm. now pauling was aware only that on the basis of chemical bonding he has tried to explain the nature of difference in the bonding mm -hmm. According to Pauling, he has tried to explain since fluoride is the more electronegative nature as compared mm -hmm. to ammonia, so cobalt fluorine bond should be ionic, mm -hmm. and cobalt nitrogen bond should be covalent in nature. So covalent means sharing of electrons mm -hmm. becomes diamagnetic, mm -hmm. and ionic means transfer of electrons becomes paramagnetic in nature. Okay. Now in science, without experiment, nothing is true. Yes. So same Pauling has tried to explain. He has synthesized. the compounds by taking the another metal ion mm -hmm. but he is surprised to see that they have same magnetic moment for example okay. ni ns36 2 plus and ni f64 minus and he found that both the compounds having same value of magnetic moment so his idea his idea has been rejected okay. he himself rejected his idea okay now hagens was the another chemist who has explained the given the idea of nrn outer orbital complex okay, okay. Inner and outer means because I'll give you the brief idea. This introduction about the inner complexes. It should should be clear. N minus one D two, N S N P three. It means three D. If three D orbital is used for hybridization along with four okay. S and four P, you can say D two S P three. Okay. That is called inner orbital complexes. Okay. So we take five d orbitals, three d orbitals, mm -hmm. then one s orbital mm -hmm. and three p orbital. Mm -hmm. Suppose you take cobalt. Mm -hmm. Now in case of cobalt, C O N A three six, the three plus. The oxidation instead of cobalt is plus three. Okay. Therefore, the electronic configuration of cobalt three plus should be three d six. So there are five electrons. The five d orbitals are present here. Now since two two d orbitals are utilized for hybridization. Mm -hmm. So we have only three orbitals are available, and there are six electrons. Mm -hmm. So all these six electrons are get paired in three orbitals, mm -hmm. and so you'll find there is no unpaired electrons. Mm -hmm. Therefore, cobalt that is going to say hexamine cobalt three H diamagnetic. Okay. And CO F six three minus N P three N D two means if four S, four P, mm -hmm. and four D orbitals are used for hybridization, mm -hmm. then you can say S. P three D two. Okay. This if this is the case, these are called out orbitals. Mm -hmm. All right. So in case of fluoride, he has suggested the complex will be out orbital. Three mm -hmm. D orbitals, five electrons will be intact as such. Okay. Mm -hmm. Five orbitals have level. They are distributed one, two, three, four, five. All the five are found to be unpaired, and six. One more is paired, so four unpaired electrons. So C O F six three minus having four unpaired electrons, mm -hmm. and C O N A three having no unpaired electrons. Therefore. You can say we can clearly explain on the basis of NRN outer orbital complex. For learners, I'll give you an idea here because most of this is confused. Which will be inner orbital complex? Which will be outer orbital complex? Mm -hmm. This statement I am giving only the for three D block elements. Mm -hmm. For three D block elements, and they metal ions should present in same oxidation state. Same mm -hmm. metal ions should be same mm -hmm. and present the same oxygen state. Then D one. D two, D three. Okay. What so ever the ligands, mm -hmm. complex will be always in our okay. orbital. Mm -hmm. This one right. should be clear here. I want to ask you, sir, that what are the applications of coordination compounds in our everyday life? We are using yeah. different. Yeah. As I have told the beginning, mm -hmm. the complex plays a vital role in your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll give you more example here. Like this is the most important part is that if you are perform qualitative analysis. Mm -hmm. In qualitative analysis, you cannot perform without complex formation. Mm -hmm. We want to test for the copper. Mm -hmm. We have to prepare it. This is copper right. hexacyanide mm -hmm. ferrite. Right. If you say second A, second B group, we have to add yellow aluminum sulfide to separate them mm -hmm. because second B group radicals generally form complexes. Mm -hmm. So they are soluble, and second A group radicals do not form complex. They are insoluble. Okay. So we can separate them easily. Third represents iron. I think you are well aware. That when you got at potassium ferrocyanide, you get partial blue color. 
that is ferrofericyanide. Similarly, you can also explain aluminium. Mm -hmm. Aluminium also form complex with aluminoid agent. Okay. So complex play an important role, first in qualitative analysis, mm -hmm. second in medicine. Okay. In medicine, I have just told you the EDTA is used as antidote for poisoning of mercury mm -hmm. as well as lead. Now here, generally the general question is asked, can we use EDTA? No, because EDTA is not soluble. So we have to use either sodium salt or mm -hmm. calcium salt of EDTA, which is soluble. Mm -hmm. So if anybody inhale mercury, you ask him to drink this EDTA solution okay. and after some time he will be okay. okay. Similarly, sodium nitroprusside is used to lower down the blood pressure mm -hmm. during surgery. So there are a lot of organic, this, uh, coding compounds used in medicines. Mm -hmm. Again, extraction. We want to extract gold or right. silver. We have to use complexes okay. because you will prepare AgCN to Na, AgCN whole twice mm -hmm. complex or AuCN whole twice that is complex. Because they are soluble, so they are separated from the rest of the importage okay. and you can easily separate them. Okay. So there are a lot of fabrication with complexes in every field of the life. Okay. I, I, I already told you, chlorophyll, hemoglobin, without them, mm. we can, you cannot survive. And now Dr. Rajiv, would you like to conclude it? Mm. Yeah. To our listeners, I, I want to say that the, this coordination compound chapter is very interesting. If you go through the getting the basic concepts we have mentioned here and the IPIC naming, the valence bond theory and the Werner theory, these are the most important part from which the most of the questions are asked in the examination. So if you have any queries related to this, you can send us email and we can help you uh, in a big way and the valence bond theory and its applications they are also important topics. So, uh, these are the important concepts we have provided you. Learners, I hope you have understood this chapter of coordination compounds. It is very interesting and very important from your examination point of view. Are you jotting down the important points? I'm sure you are. If you have any queries, you can always email us. With our best wishes and be a successful self-learner. Apart from these video programs, you can also listen to our audio programs, which we call live and interactive personal contact programs. Yes, they are live. You can listen to them through our web radio known as Mukt Vidyavani and they are very much interactive because we want your participation in those programs. You can always call us in the middle of our audio programs. You can speak to our experts. You can raise your questions and then of course you will get your answers. So we wish you all the luck once again and with this it's a wrap. I have Preet Kaur take leave of you from the studio of NIOS and I thank both my experts, Professor Sulek Chandra thank you. and Professor Dr. Rajiv Prasad for their valuable contribution and time. Good luck. Goodbye.